Yeah. Woo! Oh, can you smell it? Yeah. Is she getting there a little bit? Yeah. What I'm dealing with is absolutely pinpoint perfect shot placement. That's what my goal is. You guys are deer and deer hunting, and I watch your show. And uh, so I know you're probably the number one hunting outfit there that deals with this. I've been studying deer for 40 years as a taxidermy sculptor from the outside and studying them on the inside. So what I did is I developed an archery target that teaches pinpoint accuracy where to shoot the deer from the outside, but it has to be based upon perfect anatomical knowledge. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing here is I'm demonstrating to hunters that basically all information that I can find through all the 40 years I've been doing a research of deer, all the information that I found through archery magazines and through even the veterinary community on the anatomy, especially of the lungs of a white-tailed deer or the spinal column is wrong. Hmm. So what I did is I did my research, I did my sculptures, I took them to the University of Minnesota, the University of Wisconsin, their uh, veterinary anatomy departments. I took all my findings with them to show them what I found compared to what was re what was given out there. Right. And the stuff that I found, the, the research I did, I, I believe that was proved it was true. So this year at the ATA, I got permission that I could actually bring a deer and I could actually blow the lungs up and give many seminars on the anatomy of a white-tailed deer internally of how it relates to the hunter. So, and because there's many, many, many misconceptions that are here, and that's what this is about. So you come see this? So you've taken the... the, the this the, is a roadkill doll. ...torso of a, of a deer and uh, stripped away the outside except for the rib cage. Yeah, the left, outside and the other side still intact. Left the it's organs. Like, you can see the legs, scapula. Got the neck attached, everything right All there. the way to the back end. All the way to the back. I have a dowel rod put in its thoracic aorta. I have the liver inside here to show when it inflates how that fits inside the diaphragm. Okay. I have to be able to show how the lungs are going to inflate and totally cover the heart. All right. By cleaning the meat out the inside of the humerus, the ocranin, and the scapula, this shows how far a shot can be forward, exactly how far would they go. One of the main things that people learn from this little mini seminar is the misconception that there's a dead zone between or the no man's lung between the top of the lungs and the back. Most people believe that. The lungs actually, now here's a statement you won't believe. Well, nobody believes this, but it's true. The lungs actually go higher than the backbone. And the reason is if the next time you take it here, you just cut it in half the rib cage, the ribs come out the backbone and they actually go up. Inside the rib cage, which is a thorax cavity, those lungs 100% fill that cavity up. So I'll blow these up and you'll be able to see that. Now I want you to see where my finger is right here. This is the backbone. Okay? This rib comes up above that. These lungs are going to inflate all the way to there. Now, the movement, people say when the lungs deflate, when they're breathing, they go down. The movement on the lungs are two different places. One is the ribs, like when you run, you know how your stomach goes in and out with your rib cage? Because they're, they're joined, they've actually got joints there and they have cartilage to expand. The other thing is the diaphragm in the back that's where the major movement is that goes back and forth to inhale and exhale air. But as far as the inside this cavity, it's 100% filled up with lungs and there's no void air space. So there's no dead zone? There is no dead zone. A no zone. There is no no zone. <laughs> now, you... I believe there was. I shot many deer there that I thought was there. And the wildlife disease specialist from the state of Wisconsin, his name is Terry Amundsen, he got killed in a car accident, he told me that wasn't true. What happened is, how I found out he was right, I shot two deer when I shot them high in the back, I came down and I hit the thoracic aorta. That's right where this dowel rod is right here. And I actually hit the aorta, which is along the backbone. And I actually hit the lung and I came in above it. So, and I've got pictures here to be able to put. I did it on two deer, my son did it on one deer. Hmm. Where he actually hit the backbone, hit the aorta, and pushed it away from the backbone and got two slits with his rod in it. The deer ran away, he came in, he says, I shot a buck, he went 30 yards sideways, staggering, and he dropped dead. So I reasoned, how's he going to deal with an arrow and only go 30 yards, and why is he staggering? So I figured to hit him high, you know, if you hit the back one, you know, like you get a catch in your spinal column, your nervous system through there, he's running because of that there. The reason he died at 30 yards is, he not only double-lunged him, but he also hit the major blood vessel that comes out of the top of the heart and goes to the whole back end. So because a deer dies for three different reasons when they're shot through the lungs.